Okay, we're going to come to the last working example. Uh, and we're going to look at a futures chart today. Now, futures is very different to trading stocks, very different to trading currencies as well. Uh, there are marked differences um, in the way futures contracts behave just because of their volatility and uh, the way that they tend to gap often against the trend, largely due to the fact that most of them, with the exception of the S&P 500, are based outside of the US, and so they respond to overseas news. So we've got the FDAX in here, which is the German exchange. It's, uh, it's not bad on price action swing. It's good to have a look at and to see. And I want to take you through about uh, 15, 18, uh, 18 months of price action and show you uh, what sort of trades are there and really look at some of the parameters because the parameters we put in the rules, uh, some of the rules particularly are specifically for futures contracts. And we're actually going to look at another working example uh, in the video series also on a different futures contract. Uh, we'll look at a bonds market, a bond market, which is quite different to an indices, obviously. But I want to show you this indices because there's one rule in here, particularly that will save you from getting whipsawed in and out of the market. The thing about futures contracts is that when they break, they tend to break big. And uh, the rest of the time, they tend to whipsaw around quite a lot. And it's getting stuck in those whipsaw markets that really cause people the most problem. And so the price action swing is, is good if we set the rules correctly. And there's one rule in particular that will uh, enable us to keep out of a whipsawing market. So if you look up here, you can see that uh, there's, there's a big outside day here which you probably would have been looking for an entry, you would have taken that. We haven't specifically, we haven't gone back far. This is uh, about July, August in 2010. So that would have been a, a really good trade to take that one down. Uh, and you would have held that probably down to about here somewhere. And then you really don't get much in the way of trades. You get this bottom around here. You could possibly have taken uh, this one here, except there's a little swing in there. I'm not sure if you can see it. We'll highlight it, uh, which precluded that being sort of higher swing, higher low. But before we do that, let's have a look at some of the rules that we've, we've put in place. And here's the results. You can see in the time period, we're talking about seven trades. And I'll come to that in the way we've set this up so that you get an understanding of why that is. We've looked at risk of 1% per trade, two lots, 50-50 split, $50,000 account, price action swing system, multiple trades allowed, weekly, uh, no, actually, that's uh, it should be daily charts in there, uh, September 2011 to June 2012, and here's the key, the first exit comes off at 66%, so we've shortened that, compounding used every trade up or down, but here's the one, entry by 33% of the previous range. And we've assumed on here uh, $10 per point, um, which is the value of the contract. It's actually more than that, but you can trade it on a, on a smaller mini contract these days. So this entry by 33% of the range is significant and the first exit off by 66%. If I was gonna change anything else, I probably would change this here and maybe change that to a 60-40 split. Entirely up to you. But the point about this entry by 33%, you can widen that parameter and you can say, well, I want to have more trades, so I want to get in by 50% of the range. That does two things. It shortens the gap between your first exit, uh, but also it means that you'll get more losing trades. Uh, in this particular scenario, we haven't had a losing trade by employing this. So let's have a look how it works. If we come to the first trade here, uh, let's move it across. We've got this uh, double bottom here, which is a great. We've got this little swing in here, so which precluded us really from getting in, first of all. But the market moves up, makes a higher swing top, and makes a higher swing bottom. Now, when we say 33% of the range, what we mean is that the price action range is between the top here, one of these two bars. I think they're pretty much the same. 
uh, and the the, uh, the price low here. So the price and the action, that's the range there. And then the swing obviously comes down. So when we say entry by 33% of the range, uh, on this spreadsheet you'll see that we get we actually measure the 33% of the range. So on this particular trade, uh, the bottom is 5103, the top is 5683, so the range is 580 points. Uh, the swing down goes down, that's the low, 5255, and then the retracement is 152 points. So the retracement is uh, 26%. Retraces 26%. Actually, it retraces more than that. It retraces uh, 74%. 74%. That's not right. Uh, it should be um, the other way around. But it doesn't really matter. The, the point is, is that the entry is calculated. We have to get in because this is a long trade. We have to get in before 5448. 5448. So if we go down to here, this is our first entry bar. So you can see that the top of this bar is 5467. So the retracement is 73.79%, so it comes back 75%. Uh, we need to enter by 33% of the previous range. So going back to this, this is the range here. Uh, Here's the retracement. We need to enter by 33% of this range here, this specific range here. So in these examples, you can see on this one, the actual entry is above the 33%. So it's not technically a valid trade. Now, the reason why we've taken it is quite simply because it's forming this basing pattern. And we've got enough experience here to see that this basing pattern is the right way to go and we would take that trade anyway. And from there, uh, we get the first lot at 66%, uh, so we get 171 points in that particular, um, that particular entry there. So you can see, by restricting your trade to 33% entry, what it does is we, as we go up the trades, we've got um, a second valid entry at this particular point in here, we've got a big swing comes up, so we've got a, a second entry here. Market comes up, we get taken out. Uh, we just more or less break even on the second trade, but the first first trade gives us a pretty good range. Now this swing in here, because we can't get in by 33% of this range here, it's marked as an X, so it's not a valid trade. So you, you're really taking, in that particular time frame, you're taking two trades in that time. That one's an invalid trade. Then we come down, we have a lower swing top, uh, sorry, lower swing bottom, and then we have a lower swing top. So that technically should be a valid trade, but we cannot get into that trade either because it's past 33% of the previous range. So we can't actually enter in on that trade. So that precludes us from getting into a trade. Now, it came swung back up. Uh, we probably would have got the first lot off the table by this stage but the market would have come back and taken us out here so it probably would have been a break-even trade market comes up makes a higher swing top higher swing bottom uh, with everything else fallen we couldn't have got in by that trade either we wouldn't have got in because of the rule so that would have kept us out of that trade and then we have a swing down anyway so then we carry on we come to this trade here uh, you get a lower swing top and then you get a higher swing uh, sorry lower swing bottom then a higher swing top and then a higher swing bottom so this becomes a valid trade tricks is rising it, it's still not clear but it would seem that the market is going to break away so we would enter at this point here and it becomes a valid trade and this becomes a valid trade here this is the next swing high and this becomes a valid trade as well this is the next swing high and you can go through these on the spreadsheet but this swing here, uh, it's invalidated because we can't get in by entry by 33%. This swing is invalidated because we can't get into entry by 33%. Uh, this swing, same thing. And this swing is a uh, lower 
lower swing low. Then we get a lower swing top. We can't get in by this trade because it's invalidated. Then we get a higher swing top. And so you're really into this market positioning that you don't want to be in. But you see, by putting that entry in place 33% of the previous range, it prohibits us from getting into a lot of trades that otherwise would have got us into a big mess. I mean, this is messy around here. Uh, you're right near the top of the market here. You're picking up good trades along the bottom. Uh, it would have been nice to maybe pick up one or two of these, but again, you don't really know, and then you get into all sorts of problems here. Then you come across here, you get um, three, three lower swing tops, which is a, a great pattern, but you can't get into those trades. Now, you may have taken this one. I, I probably would have done. Uh, that's an advanced pattern we look at in more detail. But again, you're prohibited from getting in there because of um, this 33% rule. And you come down here, you wouldn't want to be in this particular place anyway. And then you get a higher swing top, but you get a lower swing low, and then a lower swing high. This allows you to get in by this particular time, and that allows you to get in by there. Uh, this doesn't allow you to get in at this point. The 33% is um, prohibits the entry there and so we come down here and we would have been stopped out somewhere around there possibly down here even uh, so you get seven trades you probably could have taken an eighth one there and that would have been a really good trade but you would have been stopped out reasonably quickly after that so the benefit of doing it like this is that you get uh, you get kept out of all sorts of problem areas and particularly on indices it's a good idea for that to happen and you can go through this i would advise you to go through this and see okay these trades here how many of them would we have got into uh, the hang Seng is probably a better market to look at than uh, than the dax but i thought i'd show you the dax uh, just so we're not always choosing the easy market but I, if it was me i would look at the hang Seng on a daily chart, which is a, a better proposition to trade than this. But this is certainly tradable on these sort of parameters. Now, what you can do on the spreadsheet is you can actually, if you look at just that return there, you, you're getting nearly 100% return on that. That's pretty high uh, ratio in there. That's actually uh, $10 per pip we've put, not 25. So it, it's, it's certainly doable on that level. Um, and you've got about you've made just under 100%. There hasn't been a single losing trade in all of that. If you go through the um, the ranges, you can simply change the figures. So uh, divide that by three gives you 33%. You may say, oh, I want to enter it by 50%. So as long as I can get in by 50%, then I'll be happy. And then you can go through it and simply divide that by two and you get a much better, um, better proposition of, of getting into the trade. So that's the thing about the spreadsheets is that we've set them up in such a way that all of these are calculated fields. You may say, I want to get out by 75%. So we just change 66 to 75 and we can uh, we can get out at 75%. That'll have an impact on here. But you can see that um, on this particular one that uh, there's only seven trades. Now for a lot of people, they wouldn't bother trading it for seven trades. You could have it as a uh, as part of a portfolio, and perhaps have it as a um, you know one of one of several things that you're looking at, and just trade it occasionally. Or the other option, which a lot of people do, is of course is to start going down into smaller time frames. But you can even use the same parameters on smaller time frames. In fact, we would strongly advise that you do use uh, these parameters on smaller time frames. To do this justice, to do the futures market justice, uh, we really need to look at some of the advanced uh, material in trading. Uh, just because of the nature of futures, they tend to be jumpy. They jump around a lot more than stocks, and they certainly jump around a lot more than currencies. Currencies tend to go with the, the flow of the market much more. They tend to go with the, with the big trends. Futures markets will, will come up here and then suddenly gap down. And start making downtrends and then uh, flick up again before continuing the uptrend particularly in indices uh, so if i was going to trade i would look very carefully at the indices that i was trading uh, the uh, xjo the aussie indices is is pretty good to trade on this sort of 
time frame as well but again I would be looking at shorter time frames and perhaps just trading for certain periods of the day when the market is moving finding small trades one or two trades and then getting out and that's certainly an option uh, with live data and everything else that you've got and you can still use the same parameters but play around with some of these parameters this is the first uh, market where this entry rule becomes critical and if you don't use it if you just say oh, I'll take every trade there's a lot of trades in here you just would simply get whipsawed out of the market and this would become a bit of a disaster on your account so look at it carefully the other thing is look at um, at the bond market uh, video that we do as well and that'll show you a different market that's much better on price action swing away from the indices and uh, it's much more tradable. That's all for now. Thanks.